have come in and it's been consistent across the board with inspection items with the roof has shallow shingles and neither about nobody knows what to do because the roof's not failing it's not what the inspector's saying but yet then there's an issue with who's going to replace it and whether it's insurable after the insurance company finds out that it has shallow shingles so it, i mean you want to talk to terry and i'm say okay we got to do something to educate them because i I don't have all the answers for this one because and I don't think most of the industry does yet because it's too new. But anyway, it's the class action suit again against it, and most of it stems from consumer complaints to Atlas and about the product. And um, you know, homes that are built in the 90s, a good portion of the 90s have this. So if you're listing a property that's built in that time frame. In the early 2000s, ours was 2004. Yeah, right. had it. You need to be aware of because I know they stopped making it in 2010 when they started getting the complaints and discontinued the product. So, from what Cal said, it is a defective product, and you only know how to handle it when it does come up. So, that's what we're going to do today. So, <coughs> ask your questions. This is your chance to learn. Um, Cal uh, asked Kim Chapman to kind of dig into his little adjuster's book and talk to some people and kind of say, okay. What's the insurance company's all states specifically if they have a claim? If somebody calls and it has shingles, because we've all seen the Channel 5 news story, or most of us have, uh, you know, American um, insurance, American family insurance is dropping people because they have the shingles, or they're not renewing the policies because unless they have an inspection on the roof. So there's a lot of things going on that you need to be aware of because they're going to look to you. Because most sellers, when they throw out the disclosure, it's not a latent defect. You may not know they have it until it gets inspected. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. All right? How would you know you have uh, Inspection. They get up on a roof? Yeah. Yeah, inspection. That's what I'm saying. For me, to educate you, if, if your home was built in the 90s and early 2000s and you're listing it, you just need to be aware of it. all I'm saying. We're not inspectors. We're not roof people. But you just need to be aware when you're doing the outside of the house, it's going to show you some shingles, some stuff to look at, it, some pictures, so you can help you identify. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's really kind of what we're doing. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So he set the stage. So how do we figure out technology? Just show us, man. Who's heard of Atlas Shingles? 80% of the room. Who's heard of certain shingles? What? 20% of the room. So Atlas Chalet and certain teeth, what people are not understanding and realizing that there's two problematic shingles on the market today that we're, as inspectors, are finding. And um, if, by the way, if you don't know who I am, my name is Cal Couch, and I'm a home inspector. Uh, we do a lot of things in this office. Thank you. Um, What's the second? Uh, certain teeth. Oh, certain teeth. Certain teeth. Certain teeth are still in business today. They're just not making their change. So there's actually two products, and, and, and my my role today is is to help you. Number one, you're certainly not going to be the expert at this uh, as far as the identification, but I can give you a very very good um, slideshow that's going to point out what Atlas Chalet is, why it's defective, what Atlas Chalet, the actual corporation itself, did. Um, you know, I'm going to educate you everywhere I, I can possibly educate you. After this little small slideshow, maybe Kim and I can discuss and answer questions about about exactly what it is you're going to do if this arises. Number one, if you've got a listing. Number two, if you've got a buyer. The biggest problem with us in our industry in real estate is when you've got a house listed or you've got a buyer and you go to have it inspected and the inspection comes back, all of a sudden somebody says, you've got a defective shingle. Well, that's not a $100, $200 replacement. That's a $14,000, $18,000 roof sometimes. That creates a large problem in a real estate, a real estate transaction that is expected to close within 30 days. So a lot of the claims process, whether it's a claim with the insurance company itself, or whether it's a, a claim with the Atlas Corporation, it takes a long time. It takes a long time. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through some slides and kind of show you what. Um, you don't have that. I was starting to get it. Uh, 
part about the CD class. So called the foundation. Mm. Uh, you know what? You'll learn about foundations too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, got, the quiz. I got my notes. Yeah, right. somebody asked, did they actually get on the roof? Is that what you asked? I did. Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> just about everyone. If we don't get on it, we have drones that fly over it. That's kind of neat too. Inspector, y'all get on the roof, like of these huge houses. <laughs> so, well, that's four stories up right there. Yeah. Um, can't get a third. Can you think we put that on there? This is out of the trial. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a steep roof. It is. That's why I don't go up on it. It was beautiful. Technology. <laughs> That's why you guys are not this one. All right, so while loads, here's, here's, the, here's the problem. At, 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 it's not so much Atlas Chalet, but therefore, I guess probably the early, late part of the 19, uh, 1990s, um, the architectural shingle became so popular. We used to have this really boring three tab shingle that just looked like a normal roof. And then you went to this architectural shingle, which gave different variations of colors, uh, different texture patterns, and it gets to be so popular on these more expensive houses. Atlas Chalet decided, okay, we can do the same, make have the same look on any price point house because it's going to be very competitive price. But Atlas Chalet and the actual Atlas Chalet shingle is just a three tab shingle just like you've always seen since the early 80s and 90s. But they actually, what they did is they raised the granules on the actual shingle to make it look aesthetically pleasing or look like a architectural shingle. The problem is, is those raised elevated granules on the shingle started to blister. They started to have thermal cracking, something like spider webs going all through the actual uh, shingles themselves. And they also had discoloration. Those are the three main things that happen. Now, one of the biggest problems that we face is we, we go out and say it's a defective shingle because we know that it is just from either Atlas Chalet or, um, or other roofers. You can have a roofer go out for the buyer and say it's defective. You can go out and have a roofer go out for the seller and say it's still shedding water. So there's conflicting stories between two roofing companies. Well, one's got one interest at heart, one's got the other interest at heart, of course, it's going to be conflicting because this is such a new problem. But what we have found, and we have kind of um, aligned ourselves with a company called Nally Roofing. Um, thank you, Stacey Collins, uh, because she went through a nightmare situation with, with Atlas Chalet shingles. And it turned out that it was kind of an interesting story because she said, well, they want you to go back out and... and during the installation of this new roof, kind of just make sure that they're doing a good job. So I'm coordinating with this guy the whole time, and we're butting heads. He doesn't really want me on his roof and doesn't want me on the job site. Turns out we've been working together for about a month before that on Atlas Chalet. They have probably, in my opinion, one of the fastest tracks to Atlas Chalet. How long did it take to get that? Uh, it went long. I've used them twice since, though, and I've had another agent have five different people come out said one was an atlas expert none of them could do it but that guy could he got he closed the deal for me he yeah, actually so, terminated the contract and he was able to pull it back together so one thing that that i, now I want you to understand is is, is the deal is not dead when this happens okay that's the number one thing i want you to hear me say today there are companies out there that have done enough um defective product or atlas Chalet that they actually know there was actually a, a, I guess it's more of an application uh, of such to present to the corporation. And the corporation will give you 70, give the seller 75% off of a new roof. Was that right? About 75%? Yeah, they reimburse. Yeah, they reimburse you that much. Yeah, right. it takes a while. You have to pay it up front and then they reimburse you. Off of the total cost, labor, the whole process, or just the material? No, oh. it's, it's everything. It's everything. So it's important if you're on the buyer side or the seller side to know that there is a company or there are roofing companies out there that understand the claims process and can make that go pretty quick. Um, all right, so. Well, let me ask you. Yeah. Not to interrupt. No, you're fine. You'll get used to me after a while. <laughs> but. <laughs> you're, so, you're just kind of the only one expert for me. <laughs> I can do that. There are uh, preferred 
vendors essentially then that you would recommend or will they reimburse 75 percent from anybody that you choose or i'm sure there are other companies out there that, that get the claims process my, my, my thing is the reason i recommend now is because they are number one and number one to me is important they are real estate friendly they understand what we're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. They're not going to go in there and really kind of just butt heads with the buyer and seller because look, we're trying to get this thing closed and we want it to done right and they do a great job. But they also know they've got more of an inside track to Atlas Chalet and Certainty. Certainty is a little tougher and we'll talk about that more, but Atlas Chalet is what we're talking about today. They've got a faster track. They they kind of know people who know people, you know. Right. <laughs> if you call your insurance company and know somebody personally, you're gonna get you're gonna get talked to faster or get the claim paid faster. Now, if you're replacing these Atlas Chalet, which are not, which are really just basically a three tab shingle, mm -hmm. are you replacing them with a three tab shingle or are you replacing them mm -hmm. with an architect? We're, we're going to talk about that okay. because that is the problem. Okay. Okay. So, as of right now, class action lawsuit has been filed against Atlas Chalet. Um, all the attorneys have got their hands in it. Um, so, that's why they kind of the gavel on the money. So, if the house between 1999 and 2010, chances are, <laughs> It's an elevated risk for Atlas Chalet. Over one million roofs in Atlanta. Gwinnett County is number one. Hall County and Forsyth County are right there beside each other. And then you've got pockets around Atlanta where, because really in, in that time, that's when the boom, really the boom was, was, was happening. But you've got other roofs that, that don't think if the house was built for construction, construction was 1999, 2010, that it doesn't have because there's houses that have had new roofs put on in that time as well. House, house could have been 20 years old, 30 years old, and they needed a new roof, and that's what they used. Well, that's so, a huge boom of when all the insurance companies said they're going to pay for these new roofs, and everybody got new roofs. That's exactly right. Well, I've heard a lot of those, for example, my house had an Atlas Chalet because I had a new roof put on. Yeah. So, I'm going to ask you something that may be a question nope, right, for. Um, for the insurance aspect of it, but I had Atlas Chalet on mine, right. and my insurance company paid for it. I had a company that came out that specialized with doing that, and they were able to, because of wind damage and other things, because they didn't have that exact product, That's I just had to pay my deductible. That's Is the that keyword. Okay. That's the keyword. Insurance companies, and they're kind of getting a little bit smarter, and Kim, you can elaborate on this much more so than I, but the insurance companies that I have discussed with Really, when it, it, like I said, it's a new, it's a new problem, relatively new. Uh, just to give you an idea of how new it is, we didn't even know it existed until I literally was on a roof one day and said, what in the world is going on with this roof? So much to the fact that I got a phone call a month later and said, one of your inspectors missed it. So he closed on his house. The insurance adjuster sent a, just an adjuster or claims, you know, name it, claims guy. One of those guys that just drives by and kind of says, hey, everything's standing and there is a house here and nothing major problems. They determined it was Atlas Chalet, called him up and says, you are not insured. Your roof is not insured. If your roof is not insured, and this is just my personal experience with this because I talked to the insurance guy as well. Not only is the roof not insured, but anything below it, which is basically the whole house. So I don't mind telling you, that was a 12,000, I don't know how, how familiar you are with our company, but Home inspectors make mistakes. We miss things. I will never let you guys suffer or your buyer suffer on something that we made a mistake. How many times have you heard a home inspector say, well, we're only liable for the amount of money that we charge? We wrote a $12,000 check. Made me stick. So, this is, to answer your question though, is early on in the stage, there was actually insurance companies would say, okay, we found hail, or we found wind damage, and that's enough. Well, now there's <laughs> so many that are saying, well, we just want to do a, a, a shingle replacement. And as you said, the shingles are not the same. Atlas Chalet shingles or, 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 or actual three-tab shingles, when they made them look like this with the elevated granules, when they went discontinued in 2010, they don't make them anymore. So you can't replace that shingle. You can't buy it anymore. So they're saying, well, we can just replace it with an architectural shingle. No, you can't because the architectural shingles almost twice as big. You went from a three-type shingle to an architectural shingle, and it just doesn't line up. 
So if you find one piece of windblown shingle or one piece of hail damage or two pieces of hail damage, and the, and the insurance company says, well, we just want to replace these two, you can't do that. You can't replace the whole roof. So they started really getting pounded on, which we understand it's a business. The insurance company is a business. So they're going to try everything they can to yank that back and say, we're not covered. So now they're just saying, we're just not covered. Even more important for your buyers to pick a qualified home inspector. I, I, I cringe sometimes when, and, and I understand, hey, look, $400 is not the easiest thing to spend when you buy a house. But I can't believe how many people say, yeah, well, my brother's in the business, or my dad's been in construction his whole life. That's, that's really concerning to me because they're not familiar with this. This is too new. They, they're not going to catch this, nor do they probably get on top of the roof. So this is, if you can see this, if you can see this, this is, this is what, this is the problem. This is a, what we call thermal cracking. So when the insurance companies or the, or the roofer says, well, the product is still shedding water. Okay, yeah, it's still shedding water. But a 30 year architectural shingle is supposed to last 30 years, really about 22. <laughs> If you're, real, if you're realistic. Three tab shingles are really only a 15 to 18 year shingle. The Atlas Chalet is, 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 is leaking. And we're taking these things off the roofs. We're seeing black spots on the roof decking in less than six years. So this is a three year old roof or a, or a 2010 roof. This is a six year old roof. And it's got the, it's got the crack. So it doesn't look that bad. It probably is still shedding water because it hasn't gotten that bad yet. This is this relatively, you know, the, the brand new just probably happened. And then you've got, um, let's see, I'm gonna show you the difference. Kind of hard to tell in pictures. And I actually had a shingle and I could have brought it up and I didn't, I couldn't place it. But this is the easiest way, if you're looking, if you're looking up at a roof of a house, at, uh, Atlas Chalet, when I told you the granules were elevated and built up to make it look like architectural shingles, you can kind of see it's not a bit, that's a very clean line. And this is kind of a, a line to give you that, that different color or different texture or different look to make it look like an architectural shingle. This is just an elevated palette of, of granules to make it look like, like architectural. As opposed to, you see the clean, definitive lines? I mean, they're just, it, it's really clean. I hope you can see that and I hope you see the difference. Mm -hmm. I know it's tough and we're certainly not going to ask you to identify it, but that's how you do identify it. So this is a uh, relative new Atlas Chalet shingle at the time. And it just started blistering. <clears throat> so, you know, I told you thermal cracking, blistering, and then pitting comes from the blistering when the, when the blistering pops, and then the discoloration. So, Right here, you can kind of see just a little bit, and you really can't tell a whole, whole lot. This is what our inspector missed, by the way. This is what our inspector missed. This is the exact picture that he missed. That, that's all That's all that was there. Well, this is the, this is what happens about a year or two down the road. Um, you see how the, the blisters kind of just start popping? Well, when the blisters pop and the granules are gone, the water seeps in. And that's only about four years old. Um, this is this next picture is six or seven years old. You can actually see the, the holes you know, where they actually just literally blister the bucket. Right? So that's the problem with Atlas Chalet. And a lot of times, if you just get up on a first rung of a ladder and look at Atlas Chalet, you'll see this. Because everything now is six plus years old. So a couple things that, that you really need to be cautious of, and, and it's more of an education than anything else. So to get a roof kind of in the claims process with Atlas Chalet, Stacy had told you that there is a 75% credit. If there is ventilation or wind damage, um, or, or, or wind, wind, wind damage is often affected by poor ventilation. FYI, because if it gets too hot in an attic, it bakes the seal right here, and then the flap comes up, and a hard wind starts flapping it, 
So in the, in the event that an inspector lists poor ventilation on an inspection report, it will never get paid, or the 75% will never get credited to any seller. Because the insurance company can simply say, it's got poor ventilation, that's the reason for the bad roof. So we're very cautious about saying improper ventilation. Hail damage. That's by the way, that's what hail damage looks like, that little black spot. It looks like somebody just kind of went and just barely tapped it with a hammer and then the granules came out. So if there's hail damage on that roof, they're not going to replace it on our end, Atlas Chalet will, maybe an insurance company will. Kim can talk more about that. But Atlas Chalet, once it's got those kind of damage, they're going to say, nope, that's an insurance problem, not an Atlas Chalet problem. Everybody's trying to kind of get kind of this, falling palm back on each other. Um, okay, so considerations for a buyer. This is the most disheartening thing for me, is that it's so new that, I mean, I told you, I feel like we're pretty doggone good at what we do, and we missed it. And it's sick to get a call from a buyer saying, I did everything right. I paid you guys an inspection. I hired the right real estate agent. You know, I went through my due diligence period, all this. I got the proper insurance. And then 10 days later, the insurance company that's already given me insurance sent somebody out. What's that called? Did they sent somebody out? So, uh, Chester or? Just, well, just an inspection. An inspection? Yeah. yeah. Most every company does an inspection. It's after a policy is written, not before. Right. right. After the policy is written. So he says, you're telling me that 10 days after I've moved into this house and I've got all the boxes unpacked that I am not insured. So they're just not insuring it because of the Atlas. Which has got to change. Something's got to change. And I'm not going to be in the insurance business today, but something's got to change. When something doesn't work, something's got to change. So I know the insurance commissioner is, is, is they're asking people to start going out before settlement day. But it's, it's disheartening for a buyer to, to go through that. He, he did everything right, and now he's not insured. So one, another thing that's a consideration for a buyer is you know, they've got their house on the market, and it's sold, and they've got a closing date of the 29th, and they're moving on their house, and, and you're closing on this one on the 30th, and they're moving in that day or whatever, and then they're saying, well, wait, you've got out the chalet on the house that you're buying, and the claims process we think we can get this hammered out, but we're going to have to extend closing to do it. Here's the reason why you're going to have to extend closing. Atlas Chalet will not credit any money to a buyer. Atlas Chalet will only credit money on their class section side to a seller. So if that property closes, they're out. Yes, ma'am. What if you already have a house? I bought a 2005 Ralph Wireland home in one half. Is, did they use a house type of <laughs> If it's between 1999 and 2010, chances are 50% of the time, yes. So, <laughs> what do you do in it? I mean, I, I, this is just all, this is, this is why it's so tasking and daunting and disruptive to our industry, is because Transactions are being postponed, transactions are being killed. So then the other thing is just again, just make sure if there's an education point for, for the buyer is you know, if they want to use an inspector that you know based on cost, um, does that roof does that inspector get on the roof? <laughs> How many inspectors I mean, probably the number one thing you ask your inspector or your buyer is if they're choosing their own inspector is can we at least know how many inspections he's done as of late? How many has he done in the last year? Because this is when it really came about. That's just a good question to ask. Yes, sir. You just mentioned that uh, Atlas will not pay <clears throat> for any shingles that have ventilation problem or hail damage. They're going to try so, to pawn it off. Hmm? They're going to try to pawn it off on Kim. Right. So they are not. They're not insuring it. They're saying no. That's not a problem. So what you're saying, the only way that a seller can get seventy-five percent is that that roof is perfect, and the only reason is that. Is a wrong shingle. So if there's any hail damage, ventilation, any issues on that, they're swallowing that cost. Well, and it's because it's it's, blistering and it's they're, 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 they're paying it because they know it's a defective product. Apple Shelley is not dumb. They're a billion dollar company that just basically just discontinued a product before 
it really came into the fire that it was defective. So they didn't have to list it as defective. That's why the big class action lawsuit kind of pounced on and said, look, you guys just discontinued the product and didn't really come clean about what it was. So yes, to answer your question, they're, 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 they're going to just shun all the burden off on Kim to say, look, this product is defective because it's got hail and wind. That's an that insurance problem. If it doesn't have those things, they say, okay, we know it's got history of thermal cracking and blistering, and we know it leaks over a shorter period of, you know, it's got a shorter lifespan than the typical roof. Yes. Council, then, if it's got hail damage, you owe your home insurance. But if it's at the chalet and it's got hail damage, you're SOL. Say that one more time. If you have hail damage, uh -huh. You go to your insurance company, but it's also an Atlas Chalet shingle, yeah. then you're not going to get insured. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, well, I'm not the coverage part, like, because that, that's, yeah. not, that's not really true. Well, that's good then. That's but but on, on the line that you're talking about, I just wanted to ask you. So, suppose you're the second owner of those shingles. In other words, the, the previous owner replaced their roof in 2008 mm -hmm. with Atlas Chalet. And then you bought the house in 2010. Mm -hmm. right. And now you're selling it in 2015. Can you still get that 75% as the second owner of those shingles? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it, important. It doesn't have to be the third. It just can't be any. Okay. And you, you guys know this as well as anybody when you go when it comes to claims, just like I was showing does. They send an adjuster from their company to a house and it's got a for sale sign yard in the yard. It just doesn't go well. You know, it, it, they, they, they're really finicky about being in the real estate transaction. We're going to take our signs down. And they're the ones that are having to take it. And they're the ones that are having to take it. Somebody else's signs. So basically, basically, what you're saying is that if the insurance decides to pay for it, okay, because it's a hail damage or they put it into one of the, the seller's still going to get nailed because your insurance premium are going to go up. Yeah, and here's one of the worst and here's one of the worst the, the worst things is, is, is as Lacey said, in some cases they will just give you a credit. Somebody's gonna come up with ten grand or, or fifteen grand to pay it. Good news is Snally will will kind of hold that. They'll say, well, you know, kind of like you know the, the that we pay some things that sell or are closing sometimes with two or three vendors. Oh, wait. Um, What's the time frame on that? Four to six weeks. So that's about <coughs> the extension that would be a right. That's not bad. No, it's totally not. That's not bad. So just considerations for a seller. Here? Yes. One other quick question. So I'm dealing with this because I have a seller uh -huh. that we went through the process and then we're told. We had our insurance adjuster come out and look and said, their inspector said, no, 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 you got seven or eight years of good life. It is at La Chalet, but you still got seven or eight years of good life on this roof. If she decided that she wanted to still see if she was. Now's the time. But would she call Nally or, who did she, or did she call Atlas? She'd call Atlas. Because they. She doesn't was, want to deal with Atlas. Okay. They, did, they send the Atlas. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll get, let, me, let me clarify that. That's a great question. A homeowner calling the Atlas will get run over like a truck. Okay. It's just like, you know, if you're out of accident and you try to get the insurance company to close your account. Um, <laughs> for depreciation or whatever, and they just never want to give it to you. Atlas really is not going to do it, but now it's dealt with it so much and has the people to, to in, in line from the from the history that they've got, they do a much better job of getting this approved. Okay. Do you have Nally's number? Yes. As an inspector, if you go on a roof, and you recognize that it's an Atlas Chalet roof, but it's not showing signs of defect, do you automatically declare this is a this is a defective roof that needs to be replaced? When 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 I pull into a house and I see that it's Atlas Chalet shingles, I don't even get on the roof. Because I I, I know I'm gonna recommend a roof to really come out anyway. Well is is I don't I don't want I don't here's so here's my answer to that question. If I get up there and say hell damage or in, you know things of that nature, then it just complicates it. No, no, I understand that. But so, so, so if it's so if it's not showing any signs of deterioration, is is Atlas still going to replace it at seventy five percent? Okay. You don't have to. I mean, I, so you just I, have to have that. After, after six years, 
of this. Uh -huh. So the last since the last time they installed the roof, that's that was really. I have not <laughs> seen one, and I've seen over fifty. I haven't seen the one that didn't have blistering, thermal crack, or discoloration. And did you not say one. the only way to get the seventy-five percent is the homeowner Don't has to be selling it, or no? Just, no, no, no. Not, the, the seller has to deal with that. The, the you can just be aware that that, that right. you have an atlas roof, and they and. But after they do it, the, 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 the roofer, let me clarify, the roofer will find reasons. Don't think they just say, oh, because you've got our roof, they're going to replace it. The roofer will go out there and identify and mark and brand and take pictures and do okay. all those things to submit the actual claim. Okay. Yeah. So they, they can, can, the wording has to be so perfect. And that's why I say call out because he knows people yeah. talk to him. He knows how to write up the report. He knows the keywords. He knows. Has anybody tried to get a CE class to the Georgia Real Estate Commission? There's three things that they're looking for, and one of them is to serve and protect the public. And if you got that anything, ask Kay Evans. Dress for success got approved. She she used the keywords and got approved. Now he knows how to send those things to that to Atlas and say, here's the keywords that we know, try and true, that can help this bit process get approved. So if you're in the house, like I've I have a same kind of situation right now as well. So if the buyer is in there for let's say five years down the road and he's noticing the roof leaking, can he go through now? Uh, I, I, you know what? That's a good question. So that's that's beyond what I've <coughs> that that many years. I don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, does it, it have to be? Does it have to be a seller? I, I'm not well, it doesn't have to be a seller. I'm sorry. Just at home. Yeah. Just you know, but but like during the real estate transaction, that buyer like yeah. he closes in thirty days, he's not. There. Okay. All right, so a couple things to be considered by a seller. Get the pre-listing inspection. If it's only roof, it's a hundred dollars. If it's you know, we do a we we do a bird's eye view pre-listing inspection for very little money. Major mechanical, foundation, roof, termite for like two hundred and twenty five something dollars. And it, so it's gonna be worth it to get rid of that headache during the due diligence when everybody's emotions are flying. Getting ready to close, and this happens. Uh, it gives you more time to work through it. Class action lawsuit that for, for, for the actual going down this with Nally roofing, and, and, I, and again, I'm not, it's not an advertisement for Nally roofing. I just know that they are very real estate friendly and very good. There are more roofing companies that you might find, but just know that this process with them is longer than the typical, you know, 30 day closing period that you're hoping for. So sometimes those things have to be extended, uh, the due diligence, or, or not the due diligence, but the actual closing date itself. Insurance claims, uh, I'll let you talk about this. If you're gonna go through an insurance claim now, um, in the 2014 House Bill, um, H16, something like that passed, where you get the third party has to be, you know you know all about that, I'm assuming. The third party part? Yeah. It, they, you know, they just changed that third party to be, I think it's um, licensed public adjuster to help with discrepancies and. You know, I'm I'm not familiar with that. Okay, part of the process. so that's a brand a brand new thing. Honestly. I can get <coughs> really shifty. That's more of the seller and their insurance company. Um, here's where it all kind of got over with the insurance companies. Uh, close your ears. I'll speak my mind. I'm saying something wrong. You know, two shingles. Are wind damaged or hail damaged, and they say, Well, you know, typically we can just patch or repair these two shingles. When we can't find or it's discontinued to put those two shingles in now, it's the whole roof, and it's it really sucks for the insurance companies. I was told they can be custom cut, you know, I know the size is different, but yeah. then you still have the issue of the here's the custom cut problem the three inch, the, the three tab shingle. And you've got the architectural shingle is is uh, is not a it's a two tap. So not only are they too long, they're too wide. The reveal three different dimensions are you you could cut them, but the reveal will never be the same. And if the reveal is not the same, that's not going to shed water the same. Unfortunately, I have had to listen and talk and see too many examples. It just doesn't work. They wanted it to work really bad. It wouldn't work. Um, It is important to know for the inspector how the seller plans to proceed with the actual claim. 
Are they going to go seller homeowners insurance, or are they going to go Mally and Atlas uh, process? Because it's going to be different on how I report it. The reporting on that's huge. Because if they plan on going back to their insurance company, I'm really looking for hail, and I'm really looking for wind. Because it's going to help everyone's cause. Sorry. If it's Atlas Chalet side, I'm not even getting on the roof. Because I don't want to know. We just want to say it's effective. We know it's Atlas. Y'all do. Am I confusing you or helping you? Something. So there's a lot changed in the last couple of years. We got our roof done last year. Or maybe maybe a year and a half ago, and we had a company come out that specializes. That's all they do is insurance work. So the insurance company didn't even require us to get three bids because they this company did it for what the insurance claim paid for it, and we just had to pay our deductible. So you know, for thirty two hundred dollars, we got a brand new roof, which I was happy about. But they did have to go up there, and they actually this company actually met with the insurance adjuster. They went out there and did all everything to it. Is that process changed somewhat? Have you seen that in the last year or so? Or is that, is that, that or not good? No, that's that sounds you know, exactly the way it happens. Okay. So it just depends on the insurance company what their procedures are or <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and of course your roof was not Atlas, right? It was it totally Atlas. Atlas. Oh it was Atlas yes. they replaced. I'm yeah. sorry I didn't hear that part. Um, just about everybody in our neighborhood now. Okay, and did they come up with a percentage of it that was damaged, or how did they determine um, how much? Was there was wind damage, but because there wasn't a replacement product the same, they had to replace the whole thing. There was enough, I don't remember the exact percentage, but it wasn't, and all honestly, the whole roof was not damaged. Yeah. Well, but, but enough of it was. Right. And that's the key. Right. You know, and there was water coming in around the chimney, it's, but that could happen on any product that was right. not so, And sometimes, I mean, you may know more about this than I did, but sometimes what, from the direction of the storm, you could have half of the roof damaged because the storm came in this way. The half over here is not damaged. They're going to replace half. And then you, you don't have the issue with everything lining up with the different size shingles if that's the case. Is, is, am I right? And would it be true, like, I had mine replaced for hail damage probably in 2010. What if they came back in and replaced with Atlas Chalet on an insurance claim? Would you still handle it the same way? You would find out of, and have balance on this? Yeah, well, right. or, or your current right. roofing, or, or, the, or the company that did it. Or the company that did it. Because they, they would actually yeah. probably have a faster track than even Mally would, because they're the ones who bought it directly from the manufacturer. And that's the really the fastest track. Okay. Atlas Shelley, for a long time, the corporation said, we won't pay any claim unless you've got the original receipt. Or, or if you're the original purchaser of the product. Well, 2006 and 2007 and 2008 and 2009 2010, the builders that bought these products are gone. So we, we got to find the original purchaser. <laughs> so they they, lean, they they lightened up a little bit with that. Um, questions? Was it 2010 when they totally discontinued? They stopped. They stopped manufacturing the product in March of 2010. If they stopped manufacturing, that doesn't mean all of the inventory was used up, right? But if, 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 if a builder had bought it and, and, and held it, like a lot of times we'll see, yeah. uh, a lot of confusion with uh, new construction or even mm -hmm. you know 2008 houses. We're seeing 2006 mm -hmm. and seven water heaters and yeah. furnaces, and people are going, "This doesn't make sense." <laughs> They're you know, stockpiling in you know, warehouses. So, you know, they probably could have been through 2010 as fast as they were building. Um, so, I'm, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kim and I'm a home protector. Um, so, from an insurance perspective, um, the, the couple things to remember whenever a policy is written, there's an underwriting review period of 60 days. And so that's where insurance companies have the right to go out and inspect the home and find out if there's other conditions. It could be the roof, it could be a tree that's about to fall on the house, it could be anything that they feel like is detrimental to the safety of the house. So during that review period, if they see that there's a, an issue with the roof, and it's always been that way, whether the roof's a, too old or uh, has any other problems, they're going to say you've got you know, 
during this period, you're, we're going to issue a cancellation notice and we can cancel you. After that review period, you still have 30 days to get the problem corrected. So there's about a 90 day window there. Um, and Allstate did change it now so that a major, in a major condition is, we have a list of 20 things. And one of the things on that list now is Atlas, shall I shingle? So if the home has those shingles, that is going to be a major condition and it has to be replaced. So we no longer are going to cover those homes. Now, obviously we wrote thousands of them before we did it was a defective product. So there's thousands of homes that out there that you're going to run into that have the shingles and we're going to cover them. And we're going to cover them just so like you're not going to drop a home owner. No, we, we're not going to non-renew somebody because they have the shingles. I mean, they're grandfathered in if you want to use that term. So as far as coverage goes, you know, when, when this news story hit Channel 5, I think it was two months ago, Allstate had to put a statement out about the, the coverage. And I don't, even, I don't even know if I saw the story. I don't know if Allstate was mentioned specifically in the story. They were. <laughs> they were. Okay. So their statement said that Allstate stands behind its claim practices. We evaluate each claim for a loss uh, that results from covered peril individually based on the unique circumstance and then determine the appropriate resolution. We evaluate roofs with Atlas Shelley shingles in the same manner we do roofs with any other shingles. In cases where a roof replacement is warranted, we will pay to replace the roof. In cases, in cases where repair is warranted, we will pay for the roof to be repaired. All state is committed to delivering claim services faster. So basically they're not treating it any different than any other roof, but they're not going to replace the part of the roof that's not damaged unless more than a certain percentage of it. And I wish I had that percentage that I knew exactly what percentage of it had to be damaged for the Five times hail within a 10 by 10 section of okay. that mountain, uh, five or more, and then um, there's, there's wind damage and stuff like that that I've talked to somebody about. Okay. <coughs> exactly. But that's a lot. Yeah. But um, is it always either or? If, if there's, let's say you, you've got some hail damage in the small area of the roof that might possibly need to be repaired and covered by insurance. While you also have the total breakdown of the Atlas shingles, is, is there a potential for a situation where where Atlas is going to be replacing the roof, yet you're going to pay for the let's say 25 percent that's mm -hmm. that's damaged? That's a great question. It's too, it's too early to look. You know, we, that'd be unprecedented. We haven't seen it yet. So well, I mean, possible, I mean, it's possible by a certain amount. And I, I can't imagine a local insurance company or an Allstate working with Atlas Corporation. I think somebody's going to go. Well, well you could discover during your your inspection that you, you know you have a hailstorm and you do, and the adjuster right. goes up there and says, "Well, here's the problem." But while I was up there, unbeknownst to the homeowner, you have Atlas. Shallow yeah, shingles that are that are blistering. You know? It sounds to me you could file a claim, have the insurance company repair the part that they're going to repair, and then you then you go to Atlas and say then you do the process that you were talking about to get the rest of it. Well, it seems it would be better if you could do it all at the same yes. time so you get all the same get it, so yeah. you get it yeah. done yeah. more efficiently. Wouldn't you be better off going that route first to see what the insurance would cover? Yeah. If there is damage, I mean well, the problem is that they're saying that they're only going to fix that section. Gotcha. But then you're saying, well, they can't because the yeah. size is different. Right. So well, I think it'd be better to go to the house what they want to do when you have a problem. I mean, you can't blame insurance companies for trying everything they can to really save. I mean, they're going to get crushed. You know, a million roofs in Atlanta alone. Mm -hmm. you know? oh, yeah. And then 12,000. They're trying to, they're, yeah, 12,000 average. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, not, that's not, you know, it's on the little more side. Right. I got lucky over it. Mm -hmm. And you get over there in the manor, and those are 19, 20 miles of our roofs. Um, so you just don't, we, we say it all the time in our inspection reports non professional repairs or incomplete repairs. You know, I mean, we really want the whole thing. That's kind of the route you want to go is Alice Chalet. Right. They've got the money to spend, it's just you've got to go through the process. It seemed like it would be to, to the insurance companies that advantage if that was the situation where, where you guys are up there and you see some minor damage, well, let's, but then you also recognize that the whole roof is deteriorating. And let's be fair to them. They're insuring a defective product that somebody else created. So 
you really, I mean, it's not fair. Yeah, well, there are any other companies that they're just getting pounded now, and we, I'd rather them pay it than the homeowner. Well, the problem will come if, if you go through the insurance, and my understanding is right, if you go through the insurance, and the insurance says, we're only going to replace what's damaged. Okay, let's say that you just take the right size. But let's say that they do that, and the homeowner says, okay, now he's selling the home, and here comes a buyer inspector and says, guess what? Three quarters of your roof is not good. When things don't line now up, we got a problem. When right? things don't line up, they're going to leak. Right. So my, my question also, just for you, from me personally, is there any change? Could that, I mean, is there a change coming that the insurance guy was going to can go to the house prior to closing to make sure uh, that somebody didn't? Not that I'm aware of. And I just learned this recently. Those guys that go out and inspect the home after a policy is written get twenty eight dollars. So, so they're, they're they have to slow down. And so they're just out there long enough to measure the home, take a couple of pictures, just look real quickly and see anything about to fall and you know, destroy the side. That's it. So So when did you get this list with the Atlas Chalet now as one of the things that you want? Insure going forward for a new buyer, oh, like you, twenty days, thirty days, forty-five days. How long? How long ago did that come across your desk? You said you just recently got a list, and that is. Oh no, the list has been there. I just noticed that that was showing shingles were on the list. Okay. Because we don't get honestly. This is not something that has come back to us a lot of times. Oh, we've written this policy, and it's going to be canceled because they have that. I mean, it's not happening right. to us yet. Normally, what happens is just the roof's too old. Or there's dry rot, or you know, there's some other conditions that, that we see frequently. But we don't, we haven't seen this one a lot. Okay. How far beyond the rough, the right date of the policy, if Atlas Chalet shingles would be discovered, could you pull the policy just within 30 days? Well, it, it's 60 that the cancellation notice is going to go out. And the notice goes out and gives you another 30 days to correct the problem. Right, right. I understand that. But if if six months down the road, if for whatever reason, it is discovered that that, that your covered homeowner has Atlas Chalet shooting. Oh, you're not going to be missed it. If you're saying I expect you missed it during 60 days. Right. And they're, they're good. Okay. You know, we can't go back and do something outside of the 60 day period. But again, you're only going to fix what's damaged. Not the whole group as far as covered. Yeah. So the so the seller will still have the same issue. No, so they're not going to do it. But I can't imagine they're going to not fix it properly. I mean, you keep saying, "Well, if they don't line up, that it's going to leak." I'm sure they're going to make sure that it would pass that test. I mean, right. that's, that was, that's certainly the assumption. And, and that's where the fund roof is. And that's no, where the third party may come in because I mean I would be the same as you if it was my roof and it was not because the insurance company's obligation is to restore you to the original. Yeah, but I haven't had, had, had an issue. I had some minor damage from a tree falling on my house, and I had an old roof it was shortly after I bought my home many years ago, and they had to replace the whole roof because it didn't because they couldn't match it. Yeah, and that's just what that's just breaks of the game, you know. Question. No, I was just going to say, from, and I guess Kevin left, but legally it seems like if, let's say I'm closing on a house at the end of the month, everything looks great, you know, inspection, beautiful, and then I get all stayed or somebody, and then November 30th or some, someone comes along and says, oh, your roof is out with Chalet, and so then next thing I know, I'm SOL 60 days out, who's going to insure me? That, that's that is the that's number one. Okay. So I I I have a friend who's an independent agent, and I called him and talked to him about this issue. <laughs> he does have a couple of companies that will still write the policy. They're putting in an, an ACV, actual cash value, on a roof if it's an Atlas LA shingle. In other words, you're not going to get full replacement cost if it's damaged. They're going to go ahead and depreciate it and only pay you X percent of what's. The remaining life of that room. Yeah. The closer so, that the owner can file the claim against that in the chalet, correct? No. 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 He's saying that. No, sorry, no, 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 no. Never. They can, but they're not going to get caught. We've seen that not get declined a lot. Why? It, they can never file a claim. Because they can get away with it. It's, 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 it's in their original. 
Why Mason, they allocated the funds for this? Can, can we all agree this is clear as mud? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's so because, because they should have. They're trying to limit it. No, I understand that. But, 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 but if this is the second owner of the home, it was the house after they found they were defective. Like I bought my house in 2011, and you said they stopped manufacturing it in 2010. Do can I file a claim, or am I not able? To? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Is there a cash option when filing an insurance claim? So let's say they want to repair. Um, is the homeowner able to take um, the cash value of that repair instead and apply that as the remaining balance to what Atlas might offer? That sounds like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the way claims are paid sometimes, they do just write you a check. Yeah. And then you take that check, right. and it's, it's your responsibility to do with it what you're supposed to do to restore yourself to your original condition, right? That could be with water damage. You know, they write you a check to replace your carpet and your bag. Well, if you don't do that, the insurance company's not going to come back and say no. So you no. could essentially so work both sides. Could that happen? Yes, that could happen. But mm -hmm. is, is it all, are they always going to write you a check, or is it, they're supposed to do I mean, the language in the policies is they write a party check to you and the company that's doing the or to you and the mortgage company if there's a mortgage. So I don't, I don't know that that's so, Everybody got the pen and paper? Whoever wants to uh, Now everything's contact information? Yeah. This is a... Uh, Courtesy of uh, Stacy, I didn't think that this was going to be possible, and she proved me wrong. She actually got the deal closed. Um, his name is Stacy. Um, it's a guy. Six seven eight seven two five one nine one three. Did you say that again? Stacy at Nally Roofing. Six seven eight seven two five one nine one three. And let me tell you just a disclaimer about this. I was not a fan. Of, 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 of his pricing. It was six or seven thousand dollars less than three other people that had bid this one house in Grandview and Fire Ranch. Big house. And the seller was responsible for buying or contracting them. During the inspection process to the end, he was phenomenal and did a great job and was very, like I said, real estate friendly during his transaction. So if you have an inspection report that comes back, contact him. He will take the time to explain to you. He'll go out to the house. He'll do the actual claims paperwork with the seller and make everything. Have you ever filled out paperwork and it's just like, this is so daunting of a task? He just says, look, you, you do this, you do this, you do this, I'll do the rest. He just makes it easy and smooth and he'll give you, he'll give you a straight shot. I know this is a very tough conversation and tough especially for me to explain when it's got so many different variables and unknown chemicals. Well, it's like the hardy plank nightmare. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I was, a, I, I had to do the hardy plank nightmare in my own house. You're talking about LP? Or? I mean, the LP, yeah. yeah. But and it was I, a nightmare. But I did want to thank y'all for allowing us to be here to explain it to you. So, uh, <laughs> online, and a lot of you know this about me. I mean, my job is to help people get coverage, whether it's with Allstate or not. I'll take this off. All day long, put it in my pocket, and go to my friend that can get a policy for somebody. So if you've got a buyer, you've got a seller, and they need coverage on a home that's got the roof and the roof, and Atlas isn't going to replace the roof, then that's fine. You know, I can still go get, get the coverage that they need. So, okay. okay. Everybody turn in the business card? No, no. Make sure you turn in the business card. So we're a little more educated, which is the key for this today. So, um, so let us know if you have any questions. We have some good resources and things do come up. Make sure you give these guys a call. Okay? All right. Have a great day. Thank you. We need two cards. All right. Thank you.